All fairies delve for dreams, but not all wait for their victims to fall asleep. At night, the fairies steal dream stuff for their queen. At daybreak, countless creatures wake weak and hollow, and fairies hang beings that interest them as ornaments in the sky, each click competing to outshine the prize of the last. Modern Fairies is a combination of control and aggro, using everything from hand disruption and counter magic to creature swarm and tribal synergy. The recent printing of Smuggler's Copter has finally put the deck over the top, allowing this deck to run a little bit of everything and offer a precision cut to your opponent's defenses. This is a deck where your role as pilot is critical. It is not a deck with a single focus, unloading like a deadly game of solitaire, but rather it requires you, the player, Player, to be making key decisions every step of the way. Let's take a look. The key fairy creatures in this deck are Vendillion Click, Spell Stutter Sprite, and Misbind Click, all of which are incredibly powerful in relationship to one another. Vendillion Click is a card that you are probably already familiar with. As many, many other decks run at main board, given the power of a 3-1 Flash Flyer that lets you look at target player's hand, pick a card from the hand, shuffle that card card back into their library, and then draw another card. Flash this in during your opponent's end step to tuck away a key piece of their hand, and then have a ready-to-attack 3-1 flyer during your turn. Or flash it in as a surprise blocker and pseudo-removal during combat, still reaping the hand disruption benefit. To add to the incredible flexibility here, you can always target yourself if you have a dead card in hand. Flush it away and hopefully draw into something relevant instead. Amazing value and we'll run three of them in this deck. Misbind Click is the click you probably aren't as familiar with, but it is every bit a powerhouse as their Vendillion cousins. For three and one blue, Misbind Click is a 4-4 flash flyer that requires you to champion another fairy when it comes into play. What does that mean? Championing another fairy means you exile an existing fairy in play, or else sacrifice Misbind Click immediately. The championed fairy remains in exile until Mistbind Click leaves play, at which point the champion fairy is returned to the battlefield. So kind of like Oblivion ringing your own creature as a requirement for this puckish sprite to remain in play. Assuming you successfully cast and resolve Mistbind Click, target opponent then taps all of their lands. This is an amazing effect. Ideally, you should hold priority during your opponent's upkeep, and then flash Mistbind Click in. Since it's still their upkeep, all they can really do is cast instant spells in response, and if they can't counter it, they're going to end up tapped out for the entirety of their turn, and subsequently your turn. The opportunity here is huge, as is the 4-4 flyer you just flashed in. Our third fairy creature is a Spell Stutter Sprite, a 1-1 flash flying for one and a blue that reads, when Spell Stutter Sprite enters the battlefield, counter target spell with converted mana cost X or less, where X is the number of fairies you control. As your board grows with fairies, so too does the power of Spell Stutter Sprite. Early game, it can counter key one and two mana spells of your opponents, and as more fairies are on the battlefield under your control, this essentially becomes a hard counter spell for one and a blue. And adding to the fairy tribal synergy, another critical component of this deck is Bitter Blossom. Bitter Blossom is a fairy enchantment, meaning Spell Stutter counts it as a fairy. And in a pinch, you can champion Bitter Blossom with your Mistbind click. Bitter Blossom costs one and a black, and is an enchantment where at the beginning of your upkeep puts a 1-1 flying black fairy rogue into play under your control, at the cost of one life, of course. This is a fair price to pay. A resolved bitter blossom can be one of the hardest things to deal with. Board wipe isn't scary when you regrow your fairy swarm in a matter of turns. You have chump blockers for days, so unless your opponents are packing trample, they aren't going to be able to punch through. And all of this adds additional tribal synergy, as previously mentioned. Bitter blossom was banned from the start of modern
modern due to fears it would be overwhelmingly powerful. But lo and behold, a few years back, it was set loose into the multiverse to wreak havoc and mischief. And trust me, you are going to love being on the sending end of said havoc and mischief. The deck also runs a playset of mutavolts, which, when activated, along with being every other creature type in the game, are fairies as well. All of this is probably very familiar as the fairy shell for the deck. But what's next is critical for the deck's success. Smuggler's Copter and Ancestral Vision. Smuggler's Copter, the infamous looter scooter of standard banning fame, is a 3-3 flying vehicle for two mana. Its crew cost is one, and whenever Smuggler's Copter attacks or blocks, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. With the Bitter Blossom in play, you'll always have crew for the copter. A 3-3 flying beatdown is bad enough, but the loot effect when it attacks or blocks is what transcends this deck, allowing you to filter out dead cards and draw into gas. I see a lot of fairy builds running things like Snapcasters and Serum Visions, and even Tassigers. I strongly disagree with choices such as these, and strongly urge you to run a full play set of Smuggler's Copters, as well as three Ancestral Visions. Ancestral Vision, recently unbanned, is a suspend four for a single blue mana that has target player draw three cards. The surge of gas a successful vision gives your deck is amazing. With fairies, games can often go late, so casting these early game to just draw three and four turns is overwhelming card advantage. So what counter spells and removal are we running? Two counter squall, a highly underrated card in this deck that I feel is a real power player. We're packing heavy removal and counter squall counters any non-creature spell while also costing your opponent two life. I can't tell you how many games that counter squall won me by surprise life loss on my opponent's part. This card is a must. As of course are two cryptic commands. What does cryptic command do you ask? What doesn't it do? Remember, reading the card explains the card so- oh, well, you know, usually it does. Hard counter a spell and or draw a card and or tap all your opponent's creatures and or return target permanent to your opponent's hands. Command might be costly both in mana and real world dollars, but it's another key part of this deck. Rounding out the counter spells is spell snare. One blue to counter any spell with converted mana cost two. Well, this is modern and the vast majority of what you're up against is at two. In terms of removal for our opponent's creatures to die to, the deck runs Disfigure, Murderous Cut, and Fatal Push. I see a lot of people running Dismember main board, but I'm much more a fan of Murderous Cut and Fatal Push. We also run a play set of Hand Disruption, and I suggest this in the form of two Inquisitions of Kozilek and two Thoughtseize. Now, you can adjust this in favor of more Inquisitions and fewer Thoughtseizes, running three to one, or even forsaking Thoughtseize altogether for a play set of Inquisition. And that's fine, you can adjust as needed. But I advise against going full play set of Thoughtseize as the life loss ends up being too much for us most games. As I mentioned earlier, the deck runs a play set of Mutavolts, the self-protecting creature land, which technically is a fairy, and we're also going to run three creeping tar pits. It comes into play tapped and can tap for a blue or a black, or for you spending a blue, black, and one, it can become a 3-2 elemental that can't be blocked. Another key piece is you're going to often encounter stalled board states, and thus creeping tar pits will creep your way to victory. The rest of the mana base is what you'd expect for two color modern. A play set of polluted deltas, a play set of secluded glen, the dual land that comes into play untapped if we reveal a fairy from our hands, an easy task to fill with this deck, one watery grave, four islands, and a single swamp. What about our sideboard? Meta dependent, of course, but we've got a lot of options. I'll have my current deck list pasted in the video description, but more so than anything, adjust your sideboard according to your meta. If affinity is giving you trouble, Hercules Recall will do the trick. Creature-based decks might need more removal sided in, in the form of Collected Brutality and Dismember, or the opposite, a few more counter spells, of which I favor Dispel, and sometimes a good old-fashioned Mana Leak. And of course, Ley Lines and Graph Diggers for graveyard shenanigans, although Dredge has thankfully been powered
powered down recently, but there's still enough of it out there. Blue Black Fairies is a deck for players who like a little bit of everything. Swinging in with creatures, countering spells, tribal synergy and card value. I feel like you get a little bit of all things magic here. It's also highly underrated in the current climate. I think its price tag steers a lot of players clear, but when you consider the cost of most top tier modern decks, while far from cheap, Fairies is also far from the most expensive option out there. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. What deck would you like to see a tech on next? Let me know in the comments below. And you can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving that comment. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.